Linux and open source have a big problem, and it's around documentation. Today, we're going to go through an example and near perfect case study of how documentation often quietly stalls in the background and ultimately leads to poor adoption by users, even though the code itself is solid. We'll also talk about other cases, but the first case I want to talk about, what we'll be calling the new mount API, which we can see conversations of it taking place all the way back in July of 2018. This commit here was add man pages or manual pages to document the move mount and open tree system calls. And it was signed off by David here. The idea here was to document and submit a patch which commits and adds two new system calls to the manual pages, move mount and open tree and attempt to talk about two specific system calls that could be used. And was an example of how we actually had documentation written in a timely manner. This was Linux 4.18 that was released in August of 2018 and a man patch or a manual patch was posted on July 10th, 2018. That's not bad. This is before Linux 4.18 was released and it is a good example of how as kernel developers also use these documentations, they can be referenced to optimize, refactor, extend and fix bugs to understand things. But without documentation, adoption stalls, not only with developers, but with users. Without documentation, people don't necessarily understand what the intention was behind the implementation of the code, or for example, this API. And quite simply, having plain and user-friendly documentation helps people understand how to use the code correctly, make sure that they don't break the code later, and that everyone uses it the same way. Releasing documentation soon after the code helps people use the new feature safely, correctly, and with confidence. But this is not what we have in the Linux kernel. As a lot of code suffers from completely not having documentation to simply not having it for a long time as it lags the actual code development itself. And here's a perfect example of that. Let's get into this in talks back and forth all the way up to July 20 of 20. And a reply to David, in October last year, you sent some draft manual pages for the new mount API, FS config, FS mount, FS open, FS pick, move mount and open tree. This was an email from Michael here, who's the maintainer of the Linux man pages project, writing to David to restart the stall documentation work for the new Linux mount API. The background here is in between 2018 and 19, we already saw draft man pages for the new mount related system calls, including that move mount and open tree. And those drafts were sent to multiple mailing lists, sometimes duplicated and never fully merged into the official man pages set. David did attempt to write a clear API documentation for the code and asked for clarification and feedback from users, but that never actually happened. Basically, Michael was just trying to unstick this process and finally get the documentation merged. Basically, he's asking David to review an update, resend each man page in a separate patch and carbon copy the correct mailing lists. And is it a textbook example of why documentation is so hard in Linux and open source as it involves many maintainers and people who need to get involved in order to make sure that the documentation is correct. And clearly the mailing list friction here slowed everything down. David was on top of things, but needed feedback due to divided ownership, evolving code and needing everyone to agree before releasing the documentation. So now we are, again are in July of 2020, nearly two years after the initial documentation was released, there has been back and forth. Clearly the back and forth has just caused confusion. This is a big reason why documentation fails is the search for correctness as there's no clear state or progress tracking on mailing lists, patches are emails, progress is scattered across threads, and there's no dashboard saying it's progress like 70% done, or there's no way to really tell what's failed and people just don't want to read documentation as developers really would just want to focus on the code. So really part of this is the process, right? The way that we approach these documentations makes it for an uphill battle, but this is definitely not the only reason we're going to get into some more reasons, but if you enjoy videos like this, make sure to subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. YouTube can get finicky. You wouldn't want to miss another video. Let's continue down this storyline as this is over a six year journey at this point, And it's not the only project that has this documentation problem. So to recap a little bit, in 2018, the first man page attempt was stalled. In 2019, the API was completely merged into Linux 5.2. In 2020, there was a, a second document or revival attempt that also stalled. As over a couple years, patches never actually got merged, although there was some attempted documentation over those years from David. And now we're getting to present day as between 2019 all the way to 2024, the API was barely used here. 
and a big reason for that is missing documentation. As a new mount API is a modern set of Linux system calls, again, introduced in 2019 to replace old fragile ones. And they are functions in order to help you mount file systems. Instead of doing everything through one big risky mount call, the new API breaks up mounting into safe step-by-step -step operations using file descriptors. But what's all that matter if it's not documented? That's why it was barely used. It was almost completely undocumented for years. The code existed, but there were no official man pages and most developers didn't even know the API actually existed. All the way up to today, we still have issues with this. And with the latest update here in August of 2025, back in 2019, the new mount API was merged into the mainline. David set about writing man pages for these new APIs and then sent patches back in 2020. Unfortunately, these patches were never merged, which meant that these APIs were practically undocumented for many years. Arguably, this may have been a contributing factor to relatively slow adoption of these new, far better APIs. And the sad part here really is some people might just say, well, we need more people to document. Well, it isn't just throwing more people at it. I think there's a deeper issue here. As documenters really do not get incentivized in order to create documentation. I have to really understand code in order to document effectively as code often gets reviewed and feedback and documents generally don't. Code also gets prestige and documents rarely get credited. How many of you would have known that David actually wrote this out from Red Hat? I'm going to guess just about zero. Also code advances careers and documenters often get unpaid. It's usually developers themselves who are creating this documentation and going through it. The person writing the code is writing the documentation as well. And of course it's boring. And we're gonna get into some of the barriers when it comes to actually even writing that documentation, at least in Linux and open source. Also code usually has clear ownership over it and documentation gets orphaned quite frequently. So we can say that open source is actually really good about building the code around things, but it's still bad at actually describing that code. Now, even though the documentation eventually landed, and this is mainly due to actually a markdown bridge that existed between the official man pages and what David initially wrote, we are finally seeing developers publicly criticizing not only the amount of time things take, but also tooling friction, which hopefully might actually create a shift in how we document things in Linux. Cause this isn't the only project where we've had issues. Let's talk about some of the other projects. As this is what a man page looks like. For those of you unaware, you can easily look this up. For example, I pulled up the FS open, which is a function to create a new file system context and everything's explained in here. It follows a very specific format, as you can tell. And we're gonna talk about that format a little bit and, and how that came to be. But let's also talk about some other major open source project examples of the same problem. We had the same issue with IO Ubring, which was introduced in 2019. And it was an extremely powerful asynchronous IO API and had sparse documentation for years. Many users avoided it due to safety concerns and confusion and the adoption lag despite massive performance wins in IO. We also had issues with Linux C groups version two, which was technically superior to, to version one. Years of partial documentation and, and inconsistent examples led to system D trying to adopt it early, but confusing its users and distributions actually delayed the full switch for years. We also had Wayland. Wayland, as a lot of us are familiar with, had its protocol documented, but the ecosystem behavior wasn't. So it was missing a lot of how do I do whatever X, Y, Z answers. And app devs got stuck for years delaying their applications while using X11, waiting for answers. Adoption was slowed. We also have systemd. Internals is another example where we had sparse developer level documentation and git plumbing commands, which were low level internal tools and were poorly documented as they assumed a deep git knowledge for a majority of users. And they explain what happened, but not how to safely use as users were left with what's called the porcelain commands like git commit, pull and push instead of plumbing commands which are more advanced internal tools meant for experts, but took forever to relay to end users outside of people who were advanced or expert developers. Anyways, let's focus back on the issue here with the file system mounting documentation. As Christian here from Microsoft, who also works on Linux, brought up a great point on Mastodon. Honestly, I'm prepared to start a Kickstarter for whatever amount of money it takes for someone to port Linux man pages from Groff to Markdown. Cypher is doing important work as usual, gives us a link here, but Groff must be one of the original sins like Moses came down from the mountain and was like, don't do Groff, but accidentally dropped the first stone table or something like seriously, every time I have to look at patches, I die a little inside. And that is the sentiment from a lot of people. 
As they start talking about this, this was posted back in August when a lot of this documentation across the file system mounting documentation got brought back up. After six years of being released and developed, documentation still had not been officially finished and merged. So of course the adoption of the API suffered. And if you don't want to suffer, make sure to check out my checklist cheat sheet and my map if you want to level up your Linux experience today, all at SavvyNick.com. Download them today. Anyways, I want to talk about Groff a little bit because a lot of you are probably unfamiliar with this. As we have old antiquated software, this is Groff, a piece of software, but powerful text formatting tool used to write these manual pages. Anytime you write out the man command, more than likely had been at some point formatted by Groff. You're able to write plain text mixed with special commands, and then Groff turns those into terminal formatted text, PDFs, and PostScript. But the problem is, Groff is extremely hard to use. It's very old. The tool is over 35 years old at this point. And the ideas come from the 1970s and it was designed for printers and terminals, not modern editors. The syntax looks strange and it's definitely not obvious, especially for new people trying to get into documentation. The tooling itself is poor. For those of you who have never heard or used Groff, there's no live preview. The error messages themselves are cryptic and there's formatting bugs that are hard to debug. So often this makes writing documentation feel very slow. And most Groff documentation just assumes that you already understand how to use the Linux typesetting system. It does explain what commands do, but they don't explain how to write good documentation. It is written clearly for maintainers and not for casual contributors. And that's what we need in the documentation space as we are falling behind in Linux and open source when it comes to the documentation. And that's why there are efforts to modernize the way that we do documentation. We are thinking about this, but we are not moving fast enough. As we have clear examples that I've given, which documentation almost made a dev project completely fail. Groff is so hard to use that we still have people like Douglas here who are giving an introduction to Groff. As of March 10th, 2020, this is one of the best tutorials that I've found. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check this out yourself. But we go through much of what Trough and Groff are and how exactly things look as this looks like a coding language in itself. It's not easy to understand. For example, here we're writing out hello world in a documented way. It's more like writing assembly language or for those of you who are used to printers and printer macros, this might look a little more familiar. Anyways, going through the code, we end up with something as simple as writing hello world, taking quite a bit of work. But forget that, let's go down and just check out how, how to write and format things. For example, we're over here trying to format hello world with clearly it italicized wording, bold wording, and a comma here. Look at what you have to actually write out in order to generate a PDF. That's a lot. I mean, clearly bold, italicized, that all makes sense, but you have to remember all this, right? So C here means centered. There's clear formatting macros, but there's a lot to understand. So as they call it, formatting a simple paper, this is what things would look like but there's a lot you have to do in order to actually accomplish this. Anyways, check this out in the description below if you want to understand more about Groff and Trough. I'm not gonna get into this. The conclusion I think here should be that it's really hard to use for most people trying to simply document things. And that's why you get projects like this that exist. As Groff is often exhausting to use, manual pages are traditionally written in Groff, which is hard to read, hard to write, easy to get wrong, and unpleasant for contributors, especially new ones. So many developers avoid documenting things simply because Groff is a pain point. This repository here is actually a project that lets people write documentation in Markdown instead, which most developers already understand and know. And then you can simply convert to a man page. It's literally just this command as said here. As official documentation moves slowly, we've already covered a lot of that. The official Linux man pages project uses mailing lists, requires careful formatting, has long review cycles, and is conservative at best when it comes to changes. Markdown makes sense. It works across almost any editor, renders great in GitHub, supports pull requests and reviews, and encourages drive-by contributions. And that is why projects like ManPagesMD exist, because developers need a fast, human-friendly way to write and maintain documentation. And we don't really have that in Linux and open source right now. I think this is an important problem to really pay attention to and fix, as this problem is only going to get worse as we just keep having more complex systems in our modern world. Modern Linux has containers, namespaces, C groups, 
layered file systems, and APIs like the new Mount API require an understanding of multiple interacting concepts, correct ordering of steps, awareness of subtle security rules. So why are we making it harder for people to write documentation? Not only that, development speed has increased. It's harder to keep up the documentation. Older APIs were simpler, path-based and forgiving. New APIs are low level, stateful and FD based. We really need to look through our core Linux documentations and figure out how to modernize the process itself. First off, I wanna thank David for his contribution and relentless effort for the file system mounting calls and other file system API documentation. Great work. Please also post that in the comments section below in case David gets to see this video. I do wanna hear from you and what you think about the documentation in Linux and open source. How can we make this easier? Am I a way off base to say that we are failing with tools and how we track these things? I'd love to hear from you as there's no single fix here, at least in my opinion. I think we need to start treating documentation as a part of a feature and not an afterthought, meaning as codes developed, we need documentation developed, or at least require a draft of a manual page when merging new system calls. I think that would force people to focus on not only the code, but the documentation around the code. Also, let's start allowing markup. It's a modern day and age, might as well start using modern output formats. And if we have to, we can still parse it through Groff, just like the project we saw before and create a manual page from all that. That'll help with easier understanding, writing and reviewing. Also, we'll get GitHub and GitLab previews. And then there's just a lower barrier of entry because we are using modern tooling to do markdown. What about reviewing style? Well, could we, instead of having code on one mailing list, documents on another thread completely, and then having months apart, do a document reviewed in the same cycle as the feature. And in that same cycle, ask the reviewers, does this actually explain how we use whatever functionality is being documented? Also, we really need automation tools that help validate and confirm that the documentations were written correctly. And another big deal is let's start funding documentation work explicitly. With company sponsorship, I think it's just as important as the people writing the code themselves. We really need to allocate maintainers to get paid time for documenting and treat it as infrastructure, not charity work. But that's going to be monumental as you have to get a shift in focus from the companies. So another one that may be unpopular is to use AI or large language models in this context, as this might be a perfect tooling idea for AIs, as it can turn the code knowledge or this expert knowledge into actual readable documentation. This is kind of where AI and LLMs actually excel. If you give it the proper formatting and what the expectations are, it can actually understand the code deeply and write documentation that's hard to actually create. It can rewrite drafts into clearer language, adapt tone for different audiences, and summarize long mailing list threads into documentations. I think there are talks about using this, and I think it is important to really push for this. If we can make some sort of tooling that could generate at least a draft, I think it's gonna make it a lot easier for developers to take a look at that draft and at least get over the hurdle of beginning some sort of documentation. It's where a lot of people struggle. It's hard to do something so daunting, especially when you don't necessarily understand what exactly the formatting needs to be. That just makes it for a barrier of entry. And there is an opportunity where AI can dramatically reduce the cost of writing and maintaining Linux documentation. Of course, people need to be involved in response for the correctness of that documentation, reading through it and confirming that it makes sense. And I believe this problem is only going to grow in open source as this just isn't about man pages and formatting tools. It's a shift in the way that we do documentation. If we want to stay accessible as open source and keep growing as we make sure we don't lose or lack features because things are not documented, we need to focus on this issue. If Linux wants faster progress, fewer legacy interfaces and more contributors, documentation cannot be optional or secondhand anymore because modern open source code without documentation isn't advanced, it is unfinished. So the question here at the end I'm gonna to pose to you is should undocumented APIs even be considered ready at all, let's say for Linux, if there's no documentation to go with it when it is merged? Anyways, I hope you learned a bit about what documentation for Linux and open source looks like and some pain points behind it. Either way, you made it to the end of the video, subscribe below and smash that like button on the way back up. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.